Hello, my name is Meg Peterson and I work here at Penland School. Um, in normal years, I make books with four to five hundred kids in Mitchell County School System. And today we're going to make paste papers. And we're making paste papers because I love to paint with paste, colored paste, and I love to make my own journals out of them. So this is just one example of a journal that I've made painting a peony bud. And we're going to go through what it takes to do the painting part today. Um, I have two paintings that will become journal covers eventually, just so you can see my process. And then those will be glued onto a book cover or two book covers later on. Um, and I will make a journal out of them. You can also use your paste pa paintings to make envelopes. It's pretty nice to get a handmade envelope. You can also collage and stitch and hang things on the wall. We will begin by mixing up the paste. All you need is water, I mean flour and water, a whisk, and a pot. Basically, that's it. Um, there are different kinds of flour. If all you have is regular old white flour that you might, you know, make biscuits with, use it. I'm going to share with you a recipe that uses wheat cake flour and rice flour that I get from the Korean grocery store in Asheville. If you get Bob's Red Mill rice flour, thinking, oh, I'm going to use rice flour, this will make your paste like turn out like sandpaper. I'm just going to make a small amount today, which means I'm going to take one dry measure of the cake flour, which is super fine. I'm going to just put it in an empty jar. I'm going to take one dry measure of the rice flour and put it in my jar. Done with those. And then I'm going to take um, a matching quantity of water in a liquid measure and pour it in slowly. Whisk it in slowly. And what I like to do to get my paste super fine um, without any lumps is to mix it the night before I'm going to use it. So the paste that we're using today I mixed yesterday. But I want you guys to understand how to do it. So do you see how I'm just adding a little bit at a time, stirring it? There are many, many recipes for paste painting. Some people use cornstarch, some people use methyl cellulose. I particularly like the one using the cake flour and the Asian rice flour. Here we are in the kitchen. And I've set my water to boil. You want an active rolling boil. And here's the paste that I mixed up yesterday. And at this point, it's not a bad idea to have both a spatula and a whisk. And into the roiling, boiling water goes the cold water flour mixture, stirring all the while. And you'll feel it start to thicken up. Um, you can burn it, so just be aware of that. It starts to get a little, it, at first it gets opaque, and then it starts to get slightly translucent and definitely thickens. And you can see how smooth it is, no lumps.
Now, I like to put in glycerin and Castile soap. I like to put it into my paste because it acts as a preservative and also helps the paste paper bend. And if I'm going to fold it to make book covers and pages in my book, I want it to bend. It's not necessary, so don't go out and buy it. Um, and it's a very precise measurement squirt <laughs> and squirt. <laughs> so to pigment the paste, all you need is something that's water soluble. And here you see that I've, I've made myself little palette cups that I've put in Tupperware. I have used just giveaway acrylic paint which is all gathered here. When I work with um, the school students who are making books that I hope will last their lifetime, I use Utrecht acrylic paint, which has got you know, a lot of strength and body and intensity of color. But it's, you know, whatever you can get your hands on is fine. I, there's a rock that is in the dirt everywhere here at Penland, um, in the ground, I mean. And if you rub it on a harder rock, it will give you a color. Let's see what that does. And this actually is one of my, my favorite pastes. <laughs> I just love it. You can also use watercolors in the tube or ink. You just pour some in and stir it up. Um, I'm going to try tempera paint because a lot of people have tempera paint at home. It's much more liquidy. And so if you make um, paintings with tempera paint, you might want to um, be a little more sparing in the water that you use when you're cooking, if you know that that's, that's where you're headed, because tempera paint is just way more liquidy. And that, that is that. It's really simple. You just mix it up until you can't see really much difference anymore between the pigment and the paste, and you're ready to roll. So, one of the best kinds of paper that you can use for this is a paper bag. It's sturdy, it's hopefully free. The thing is to look for where the seam is, right there. And cut out the bottom. helps um, the paste to sink into the paper and it also keeps it still while you're working on it. And this bathtub isn't exactly sized for this paper so I just have to kind of mush it through. And I want to hold it by one corner so that gravity can pull that water down on the diagonal. And then once the dripping has settled down, I'm going to lay it in my workspace. Now, I'm working on a table that I can sponge off. If um, you just have your kitchen table, you might want to lay something on top of it that can get paint on it, such as a board or a piece of formica or a piece of plexiglass, if you have such a thing. Just know that it's, this is a little messy. It cleans up, but it's messy. I have a bucket and two sponges, and I'm gonna squeeze one of my sponges out. I like to use sponges that have a scrubby side and a soft side. Use the soft side to 
smooth my paper down flat. And later I'm going to use the scrubby side to clean up my mess. And I like to have a rag handy. I put the sponge um, close to the bucket so that I can use it to help clean my brush as I go. So once you get to this point, however you work from this point on is completely up to you. I have assembled some tools that I might have in my house, such as a roll of tape, packing for some glue sticks, some brushes, a potato masher, a pipe, a toothpaste lid. I also have some brushes. I have a dead credit card that I've cut teeth into with scissors. Um, look around for what you might have. But if you have absolutely nothing, you're not excluded because you can always take your paste and just spoon it out on your paper and then use your hands. Not required, but it's an option. Now, the color that I'm making right now is kind of close to the color of the paper bag. There's not a lot of contrast. And it's not that there must be contrast, it's just something to think about. Because the beauty of paste paper is the fact that once you apply the paste, then you can draw through it. And if you draw through it and the color of the paper is the same as the paint, your drawing is going to be subtle, which it, there's nothing wrong with that. But let's say I wanted to make, you know, a, hmm, like a nighttime scene. And I was thinking, oh, well, of course I want black paper and I want black paint. Well, guess what? If I use black paper and black paint, then I wouldn't see anything. I would just see night. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm going to just take a spoon and there we go. That's going to lighten it up. Now, this could be it. Um, one of the things that I love about paste paper is that it accommodates people wherever they are with what they like to do um, in art. So some people that I've worked with over the years simply like to mix colors. Some people want to paint images, some people want to draw through the paste, some people want to make patterns. It doesn't, it, it's fine. Whatever you want to do is absolutely fine. Um, one of the things that I think is fun is to make something called pulled paste. And I'm going to try that by folding this in half, getting my hand clean. and then pressing this together and then pulling it apart and see what happens. It can be pretty nice. Um, if I want to keep going with adding more textures and more patterns, I can. Um, I thought it might be fun to try just a piece of corrugated cardboard. It is helpful to have a brush um, if, you can, if you can swing it. Let's just see what happens if I can print this. So you can start looking around your house to see if you can find anything to play with. Um, I can go back with, you know, my fingers. Don't start out saying, I'm going to make a masterpiece. Just play. 
when you're finished, you have to find a place to put your drippy, gooey painting. And I use window screens, but it's not likely that people have window screens. You might have a clothesline. That works. Or you might have just regular old newsprint. And what I would like to do is pick this up and Hold it on the newsprint like so, and then find a place on the floor to put it. Now, this margin of paste, if my next painting is smaller, I can just leave it there and use it. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to put another piece of paper down so that it's on top of that paste because this paste is glue and it will glue to the newsprint or whatever surface I work on. So I, unless I have big gobs of paste, I tend to clean this frame of paste up before I move on. Um, another way you can start working is to use a brush. So I, you see me putting maybe a tablespoon of paste on an area this large. You can always add more. And now let's just play with some of these tools. One of my all time favorite tools these days is a little spatula with teeth in it. Um, I like to just kind of cross hatch, but a cut up credit card does a pretty good job as well. And I can make stripes. I can make waves. Um, cross hatching. Whoops. And that happens too. Tearing happens. Um, these have to be cleaned off as you go. Let's play around with like stamping. So if I wanted to stamp circles of this color into here, I'm going to maybe get my brush clean and then I'm going to put some paint out on my table. A pad of paint out on my table and then stamp into the pad and then a natural sponge. Let's try that. See what it does. Now this is a natural sponge. I have a human made sponge. You get the idea. Just have fun. Take uh, this gold. I'm just gonna, when I saw this holding my glue sticks, I thought, huh, that might make a decent tool for painting paste. Yeah. Fun. As you can see, you can just keep going and going with the pattern making with whatever you have handy. Sometimes I like to do this. Tear this because this is paste. It's it's collage material. So feel free to just have fun with that. So last night, I was having a very hard sleepless night and my cat decided to um, capitalize on this sleeplessness and put his chin on my chin. I decided that'd be a nice painting. So you see how I sketched it out 
And the paper that I'm using here is the construction paper that um, I make all my books with, with my students. Um, for the paste paper, it's True Ray construction paper. Um, and so I sketched it out with pencil. I can see it's smearing a bit. I don't care, I'm gonna paint over it. And when, when I'm doing an image like this, then I wanna think about the background first and build it forward. And I'm not gonna get this painting finished with you watching, but I'll just show you how I start it. You see how, you know, I'm just using a large brush to paint big broad areas first. I can always go back and draw with the end of the paintbrush anything that I'm forgetting, or I can take a smaller paintbrush and start drawing details in. There are such things as water soluble or watercolor pencils and crayons. If you find something that has a nice contrast and you know, this is wet, so the pigment starts to let go. I have these water soluble crayons that I like to use a lot. Um, so, you know, if I want to really get the outline before I start to um, get too specific, I can draw everything out first um, with this and then proceed. Let's see. Cleaning the brush. Use a smaller brush for smaller details. So the cat is white and gray. Very sweet cat. But I don't know. It was very comforting having him on my chin, but I wasn't sleeping a bit. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys get the idea. Um, 